Is this about to explode? New video captures three Ford electric pickups in flames in a Dearborn parking lot. Nobody's inside, hopefully. These F-150 lightning fires are reigniting a growing concern over the batteries in electric vehicles. And we start here at six with the difficulty of putting out an electric vehicle fire. Good evening and thanks for being with us. I'm Kimberly Gill. Good evening. I'm Karen Drew in for Devin Skillion tonight. Ford shut down production of the popular electric truck for five weeks following this fire in Dearborn. That happened back in February. When the fire was out, this is all that was left of that lightning truck. Business editor Rob Maloney talked to local fire departments about what it takes to put out an EV fire. Rod joins us live from Southgate, and it takes a lot of time, a lot of water. It's, it's a battle, Rod. Yeah, and a lot of firefighters aren't necessarily prepared because they probably haven't seen a fire. And in fact, this impressive video that we're looking at right now came from the Dearborn uh, fire department and the police department. CNBC was able to get it uh, under a freedom of information request. They shared the video with us and it gives us a front row seat at how difficult putting it on EV fire is. The automakers have been training fire departments how to cope with these EV fires for the past couple of years. But when the fires reach what's known as thermal runaway, firefighters know they have one next level, very hot and frightening conflagration on their hands. This was the scene last February in a Ford Dearborn lot. One charging F-150 Lightning burned, setting two others next to it on unquenchable fire. Dearborn's fire department isn't commenting on this blaze, but Bloomfield Township Fire Chief John Leroy knows firsthand the problem. We just know that it's going to need a lot more water, whereas opposed to in the past, a simple car fire, would, we could fight it with one tank of water on our truck. However, now the EVs, we're going to know we're going to need to hook to a fire hydrant to try to put it out. Of course, our highways aren't lined with fire hydrants, which means simply letting the vehicle burn itself out. Leroy says put a chain onto the fire truck's bumper and pull the vehicle away from anything else that could burn. Moving it to a place where it can combust by itself and not spread somewhere else. More disconcerting if EVs burn inside a garage like what happened in Bloomfield Township last month. Leroy's fire department immediately called in all the available local help they could get when they learned an EV sat inside with three other gasoline filled vehicles. Until the product is totally consumed, they will continue to possibly flare up until all of that heat is removed from the, from the battery itself. Now, when Ford went and looked into all of this, they ended up recalling 18 vehicles, found out that it was a problem with the battery plant, the way the batteries were being assembled down in Georgia. They say that they have fixed that problem and they've moved on now and the production is back up and running and everything should be okay. But firefighters across the country know that they have got to get better at this because there's going to be mass adoption here very soon. Back to you. Definitely, firefighters I talked to are saying, hey, we need some better training, obviously, and equipment to deal with this. When you're talking to the folks, what are they saying about these EVs? Is this the only place where the kinds of fires that we're seeing that are causing the trouble, the electrical vehicles? Interestingly enough, Karen, you asked that because what they're finding is not only is it EV electric vehicles, but it's scooters and electric bicycles. Mm. They say that in New York City in particular, they have had these bicycles and electric uh, bikes and and, uh, and the scooters charging in hallways, burning the houses down. They advise anybody with an electric bike or an electric scooter to charge it outside away from the house. Some very good advice. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Rod.